everybody and thanks for joining me. So today what I want to go over is going to be trimming up my ballistic calculator and then using that information to set up a dope card. So now I just barely changed the powder that I'm using in my rifle load and now I'm getting slightly lower velocities than I was before. So because of that, all of the data and ballistic corrections that I was using before are no longer going to be the same. They're going to change. So I'm going to come back. I've got to verify what drop my bullet is going to get at distance, make sure that that matches up with what my ballistic calculator is telling me, and then use that to populate a dope chart. All right, everybody. So now we've got the rifle set up. But before we get started, there are a few things I want to go over that we're going to need to be able to accurately true our ballistic calculator. So some of those variables are going to be muzzle velocity, ballistic coefficient, and air density. So muzzle velocity, I ran this rifle through a chronograph before this range trip. As I stated, the muzzle velocity on this rifle is 2950. So that's the first aspect that the calculator is going to need to be able to make its corrections and calculations for you. Now the next one is going to be the bullet's ballistic coefficient. So this is how much drag that bullet has, and that's going to be used to calculate the drop curve. So most uh, bullet manufacturers will publish the ballistic coefficient on the website on the box of ammunition, depending if you're reloading or shooting factory ammo. That's usually going to be available from the manufacturers. And then the last one, like I mentioned, is going to be air density. So the thicker the air, the more drag is going to be imparted on that bullet. It's going to slow it down and it's going to drop more at distance. So air density is typically most affected by elevation and a little bit by temperature. So most ballistic calculators are going to have a place to input probably your elevation and then it's going to give you a rough air pressure and air density based off of that range. So those are the three main variables that are going to be needed to calculate what's going on downrange. And then of course when you're shooting at distance you punch in the distance you're shooting at and it will tell you the drop and make that correction. So now I've got everything put in. I've got the ballistic coefficient. I've got the multi velocity. Uh, the way that I've taken air density today is I actually have a uh, Kestrel wind meter. So now not only this does this tell you the wind speed and the wind direction, but it also gives me the atmospheric pressure, the temperature, the humidity, all those environmental factors that can play in. So I'm going to be using this, and I'm going to be using the applied ballistics uh, calculator. So it is built into the Kestrel with that software, so it should make most of the corrections for me. What you find out is you get a little bit of variations in muzzle velocity, a little bit of variations in ballistic coefficients. So the calculator is going to get as close as it can, but you may have to come back and true that up a little bit. So first things first, let's get on target at 100 yards, make sure we're sighted in where we want to be, and then we can start moving down range and making sure our bullet drop is going to be what we think it should be. All right, let's get started. Let's do our first check at 100 yards, and then go from there. So now we've gone and checked the verification at 100 yards. So now we're going to move out and check the verification a little bit further out. So I go from 100 yards to 500 yards. That's where I'm going to actually check my verification. You can check whatever range you want, but I figure if I'm good at 100 yards and I get it dialed in at 500, then everything between 100 and 500 is going to be good, and then I'll move out just a little bit further. So I'm going to put it in my ballistic calculator. Let's see what kind of drop I should be getting. Calculator's telling me 6.58 minutes of angle of drop at 500 yards, so it's dialed to 6.5. So at 500 yards, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be aiming right at the center of the target. So it's a little bit breezy out here. I'm not worried about any side-to-side -side drift. What I really want to know is my horizontal variation of the bullet. So I'm going to try to shoot right for the center line of the target, look for that bullet impact, see where it hits, and that's going to tell me if my drop correction is going to be right or not. And then what I'm going to do from here is if I do need to make corrections, there's typically two ways you can do that in one of these calculators. Um, one is going to be by tweaking your muzzle velocity until you get it correct. And the other one might be tweaking your ballistic coefficient a little bit. Because the ballistic coefficient on your box is an estimate from the manufacturer. It does vary a little bit. So those are the two variables you might need to play with a little bit to make sure your calculator is getting the exact same output as where your bullet truly impacts. So let's move to 500 yards and see if we're right.
Okay, so that was pretty close. Looked like I might have been a half MOA low. Let's try one more, do a verification, and see if it's in the same spot. Okay, so now we got done the verification. I was hitting maybe a quarter or a half an inch low from where my point of aim was. So the thing with that is you've got to remember that these guns are only going to be capable of holding groups of a certain size. So right now for me, this gun is about a half MOA gun. So anything within a half MOA, I'm going to consider fairly close. I might try to bump it down maybe a quarter to accommodate, kind of come and split the difference. Uh, and that's going to be where I'm going to sit. So. With that, that could have something to do with the air pressure too, but within half a minute, you're generally going to be okay. Okay, so now, since I've gone ahead and shot a 500 and we're verified, I'm going to move out now and go to 1,000 yards. So you don't need to jump all the way to 1,000, but I'm just going to do this to verify and make sure everything that I think my calculator is giving me is going to be correct. And then the farther out you get, the greater variations you're going to be able to see. So 1,000 yards of my ballistic calculator isn't dialed in correctly. I'm going to see a much bigger variation than I would closer. So let's move out to 1,000. Let's see where I'm at. My calculator is telling me I should be... Dial my scope to 22. We'll get on target and see what we got. So now we do have a little bit of right to left wind at right where I'm at. But looking down range, it does appear that it switches back just a little bit. Oops, it kind of switched and now we're coming a little bit left to right. So we'll hold off just a little bit. Just off the edge, so I need to come back two minutes. But looking at the splash, we can come down to my reticle. We are down right about the corner, so that was down about another half M away. So let's get one more. Okay, let's correct our hold. Center of target. Let's actually come over the little target. So we just got more room to see what we've got going on. Okay. So now that one was close to a minute or a little bit more low. So the first one was about half a minute. That one was coming down to a minute. So I'm going to make that adjustment. So I'm going to come down. Let's do about 22 and three quarters. And we'll come down the full way. Let's get one more down there and see where that's at. Just off the left edge. But the elevation was good. We'll do one more. Make sure we are on. anything we were right in the middle just maybe a hair under that dot so right there is gonna be where I'm gonna be ending up so now as you can see my ballistic calculator told me to go 22 MOA I ended up at 23 so now I'm gonna have to come back in here and do is play with some of the variables until I get the readout at a thousand yards to be 23 but I also have to keep in mind that I was 6.75 at 500 yards so I've got to look at the table, look at each of those distances, and make sure that when I'm changing one variable, it doesn't change it too drastically at all the other distances. So when I'm changing this to 23 MOA 
at a thousand yards. Let's see if we can do that really fast. So muzzle velocity. So you know what? That actually might have been part of what I was doing. It was running off my old profile. So I'm going to come back and back my velocity off from about 30, 60. Let's go to 29, 50 and see what that gets me. So I'm going to come back up. I'm going to exit. And you know what? It's actually telling me now that my estimated drop in these conditions is going to be about 24 MOA. So we did run a little bit low at 23. So, or 22 and three quarters. So I'm going to come up to 23. And we were pretty close at 23. So it's giving me 24. I'm going to bump up my velocity just a little bit. And this can be called a muzzle velocity correction. So now what's going to happen is actually some of your calculators are going to be able to do this for you. So now I'm going to come in, we'll do our correction. This one does have a function where you put in your actual drop and it will correct uh, the muzzle velocity for you. Let's go ahead and do that and see what we have. Okay, so now I did come in here and plug back in the information and now what it's telling me is that my muzzle velocity is actually about 3,000 feet per second. So what I thought I was originally getting was a little bit low. I don't know if I totally trust the chronograph that I was using. So right here, what I did is to correct my muzzle velocity, I put in the distance, I put in my actual drop in MOA, and it is outputting what my muzzle velocity is gonna be. So I can go ahead and I can select this and correct it. Now it says my muzzle velocity has been calibrated to the calculator. And now what I can do is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna go back to 500 yards and see what it's telling me my drop should be just to make sure everything still looks good at that closer range. Okay, so right there, it is now telling me that my drop at 500 yards should be 6.9. So that's actually pretty close, right? We had to come down to about 6.75 and that was even probably split in the hairs. We could come down to about seven. So from the 500 yard string and the 1000 yard string, it looks like my muzzle velocity has now been calibrated because everything is fitting where it should within that range. So now with that, I've got the dope at 500 yards. I've got dope at 1000 yards. I can use that to correct my calculator. And I've got a few rounds left. And what I can do is go back and just double check all of my ranges between 500 and 1000 yards. All right, everyone. So we are back from the range now. Let's go and do a quick recap of what we found. So as I mentioned at the start of this, some of the variables that you are gonna get input into your calculator is gonna be your muzzle velocity, your ballistic coefficient, and then your environmental data. So your ballistic coefficient and your muzzle velocity are gonna be what I found to have the most significant effect on the drop of the bullet and actually trying to true your profile. So as you can see, when I started, I mentioned that I had gone through and shot this gun previously about a couple weeks ago to get some information and I was getting a muzzle velocity of about 2950 feet per second and then I plugged that into my ballistic calculator. We went to 500 yards, saw that I was just a little bit off, about half MOA. We took it to 1,000 yards, and it was about a full MOA off. So the app I was using was the Applied Ballistics app, and what it actually does is it has a library of bullets and bullet profiles. So they've done a very good job of getting bullet data and getting accurate ballistic coefficients. So I felt pretty good about the BC on the bullet being correct. So what I needed to do was do a muzzle velocity correction and calibration. So with that, what I did was at a thousand yards, I input the actual drop that my bullet was seeing versus the calculated drop, and it spits out a muzzle velocity correction to fit my bullet's curve profile to the drop that I'm actually seeing. So I went through and did that, ended up with a final calibrated muzzle velocity of about 3,000 feet per second. So just a little bit off of what I'd seen before, but after I did that, uh, my velocities and drops were very consistent from 1,000 yards, 900, 800, and 700 yards, and then even back to 500. So that calibration seemed to pull my curve and calibrate it very closely to where I feel very good about the results and the data I'm seeing. So now depending on the app you are going to be using, um, some of them might not have as extensive of ballistic profile for the bullets, so you might have to play with and tweak the ballistic coefficient just a little bit. So in those instances, what I do is I start with the manufacturer's number and I start with my estimated muzzle velocity and I will go to 500 yards. So at 500 yards, I will see where my bullet's impacting versus where I think it should be. I will play with the muzzle velocity until I get it tweaked pretty close at 500 yards. And then from there, I will move to 1,000 yards 
And then if there's any more fine tuning that needs to be done, I will go and then adjust the ballistic coefficient. So I will adjust the muzzle velocity at 500 yards and then the ballistic coefficient at 1,000 yards until I get that ballistic match at 1,000. And then obviously go back and check at 500 and make sure everything lines up and it usually should, you should be close. And that's kind of the method I've gone through that's done a very good job of getting my profile to actually match what the calculator is outputting.